Well, as the coronavirus crisis keeps the country at a standstill, some Republicans want to reopen more than the economy. They want to fully reopen Congress. Florida Congressman Brian Mast and Michael Waltz are among a group of Republican lawmakers who made an early return to Washington this week. Their goal? To get everything back up and running. According to a new article from Politico, they want to highlight the Democrats' decision to keep lawmakers away from the Capitol and let the House get back to business. For more on this, we have Melanie Zanona. She's an author of that article and a congressional reporter for Politico. So, Melanie, I want to just step back for a second. Can you give us a little bit of background on how some Republicans began this conversation to return to Washington? How has this been perceived by the GOP leadership? Well, you know, there's actually been frustration bubbling up in both parties among the rank and file members who say we're sick of being on the sidelines while this economy crumbles, while this crisis rages. Even though bills are getting done, keep in mind, a lot of this is being done at the leadership level and they feel cut out of the process. They want to show that they are working, especially if their constituents like hospital workers and grocery store workers are out there in the front lines. They say we want to be out there, too. So last week, Brian Mast, he's a Republican from Florida, started reaching out to a number of his GOP colleagues through text messages and emails and saying, let's go back to D.C. early next week, even though the vote's not scheduled yet, even though the recess has been extended. And let's put some pressure on Democratic leadership to try to open Congress back up, to try to get things moving again in Congress. And so then today on the House floor during a pro forma session, we did see a Republican, Paul Mitchell of Michigan, try to make uh, a recognition on the floor. He tried to get some time to speak, to make a speech similar to this, but he was denied by Democrats who do ultimately control the House floor. I'm curious what Speaker Pelosi's role has been in all this. That's a really good question. So Speaker Pelosi is also facing her own pressure from her own members. A lot of her frontline Democrats also want to show that they're working, but Democrats really want to do this in a different way. They want to do either remote voting, or proxy voting, basically just some way where they can remotely work, where they don't have to necessarily be in the Capitol to get some of their legislative business done. Um, and so far, though, Democratic leadership has been pretty resistant to those changes. It would be a massive change to the institution. That's why you're seeing resistance on both sides of the aisle. But I think for the first time this week, really, we have seen Democratic leadership soften on their position. The House Majority Leader, Steny Hoyer, actually put out a letter today for the first time saying he backs the idea of remote voting. And he also said that on Thursday, mm. the House is going to consider a rules change to allow proxy voting, which is essentially allowing a colleague to vote in place of another member. Wow, that's so fascinating. As you mentioned, this is an institution that has done things a certain way for so long. Who's spearheading this effort of, of proxy voting or, or working remotely at this point? One of the lawmakers who we've really seen be vocal on this is Dean Phillips. He is a Democrat. He's a freshman. He's from Minnesota. And he is in one of those critical swing districts that gave the House majority to the Democrats. And so that is why you see a lot of leadership trying to listen to them, hear them out, hear what they have to say, and take their concerns into consideration. Phillips and Katie Porter from California, another freshman from California, another Democrat, she also has been on the front lines calling for this. Uh, you see a lot of the younger members also, too, calling for Congress to get up to speed to get into the 21st century. So it's a little bit of a generational divide as well. But like I said, I do think leadership for the first time is really starting to take a second hard look at this. Yeah, it's just impossible. I mean, it's, it's sometimes hard to stomach the fact that we could, many of us, be working from home for months to come, potentially, and even again later this summer if there's a second wave. Is Congress, you know, the fact, you've heard from Ohio Representative Jim Jordan, who actually called this idea of proxy voting flat out wrong. But Melanie, if they don't proxy vote, if they don't do something from home, how does Congress manage to get any work done if we're under these lockdowns? It's really hard. You've seen leadership try to wrestle with this. Right now, what they have to do is basically get unanimous consent on any bill that they want to pass, because procedurally, you need the cooperation of every single member if you're not going to do something called a recorded vote, which requires all the members to be there. And so it makes legislating that much harder and that much tougher. I mean, it's not impossible, as we've seen. You know, they passed this $2.2 trillion rescue package uh, a few weeks ago by uh, a voice vote and unanimous consent in the Senate. But it's really difficult. Um, so they are looking at other ways to do this. One idea is to have remote hearings or to do conferences via Zoom. We've seen them start doing some of those things already. 
Uh, but I do think that we're going to start seeing some potential changes for the first time here, at least on a temporary basis while this crisis does rage. Melanie Zanona, thank you very much for joining us, Melanie. Thank you for having me.